Hi, welcome to the third episode. Today we're in Steveson on the edge of Richmond. And last episode we talked about how Richmond is being uh, an immigrant-rich city. And Steveson Village on its own has a very special Asian-Canadian history. Um, here we are outside the Japanese Fisherman's Benevolent Society building, which reopened last June. At the beginning of the 20th century, Steveson's population would be about 70% Japanese people. And only after the Second World War, the internment camp, which sent most all of the Japanese Canadians to internment camp in inland. Uh, and then that's after the war, not everyone came back to Steveson. But this uh, Japanese history is strongly rooted in Steveson for as a Canada West center for all Japanese immigrants. In 1993, a school teacher who first taught in Steveson 60 years earlier was given a rare honor. The teacher was Hide Hyoro Shimizu, selected by the Canadian Status of Women for helping shape the history and evolution of Canada. Born in 1908, Hide attended a school in South Vancouver where she was the only non-white student in her class. In 1926, she received a teaching certificate. The first Japanese Canadian in British Columbia to do so. After graduation, at just 18 years of age, he began to teach at Lord Green School in Houston. During the late 1920s, the first Lord Green School was overcrowded, forcing classes to be held in other schools in the city. Here, for class and number one row, he was one of the We're here with Sheila again from the Richmond Museum and today we're going to talk about um, the exhibitions at the Japanese Fisherman's Benevolent Society building in Steveson. Um, Sheila, can you tell us about uh, how, what do you think rejuvenating this heritage building means to the community and, and what would be your designated audience for the exhibition? I think our designated audience is everyone. Certainly we um, wanted to honor the memories and the experiences of the Japanese Canadian community uh, in Steveston in the past and on the West Coast in general. Uh, the, the story is a difficult one. It starts in 1888 with the arrival of the first fishermen from Mio, Japan, and many followed. And the Japanese uh, fishermen and boat builders dominated the fishing industry in the West Coast for many years. And then Japan, um, it started with Japan bombing Pearl Harbor and many other sites in Southeast Asia on December 7, 1941. And the result for this was the Japanese Canadian lives were changed forever. They were interned during World War II and they were not permitted to return to the West Coast until 1949. And this, of course, had a, a terrible impact on their community and their lives. They lost pretty well all their material possessions. So it was a really difficult and sensitive story. And um, we, we engaged with enormous community consultation because many Japanese Canadians did return to Steveston. They were integral in, in the process. And they, we also worked with the Nikkei National Museum to ensure we had the story right and to get the best possible resources. So that, that is kind of the story of how we work together. And I think it, it had a very cathartic um, result for the community, as well as uh, having been apologized to by Brian Mulroney, 
um, our Prime Minister, in, I think, in 1988. So that was enormously um, important and part of the whole process. So we, we were trying to reflect that and also use it as an opportunity to talk about Canadians' rights and how, how can we learn from this and apply those lessons in the future. That's, that's a really good project that you've taken on. And so how do you think um, working within a heritage building in comparison to in a museum or a gallery, that sort of space? Is, it's there, really is there limitations or oh, yeah. th does it give it more meaning to the exhibition? I think it does. I think it provides a whole context for the place. And that building in particular, it, it's humble in many ways. And you see um, how the Japanese Canadians made do with what they could and made wonderful results. And it really does give that ambiance. Uh, the flip side of that is, as exhibit designers, we often like big black boxes where we can control the, the lighting, uh, the temperature, the humidity, and and make the exhibition in particular dramatic. And you can also get better um, sometimes security and other concerns you might have. So you have to deal with all that with a heritage building. And then you have to be very concerned about how you um, impact the actual structure itself. So there are a lot of constraints. And But it's, it's always part of a design challenge. And I think um, we worked with David Jensen Associates and, and we all rose to the occasion, I think. And I would like to say also that the Steeston Historical Society Committee was just integral to making this happen. Because it was a really nice addition to the Steveston world. Like people can only see the shipyard and the Steveston Museum. Now they have another spot to understand in a different perspective yes. of the local history of Steveston. I think it does. I think it provides context and depth. And it also, when you're driving by and you see the Steveston Martial Arts Center and other uh, Japanese influence buildings, you, you get an idea. And it's just making part of our history available and accessible every day and I think that's really important. Yeah, I think that's a, um, even though Richmond Museum is a smaller community museum, but I think the vision of museums and exhibitions being accessible should, is a very good lesson to learn for many other cultural sites. Yeah, I think so too. I, yes. Well, we would like to thank Sheila again uh, for sharing with us her experience with the Steveson uh, Japanese Fisherman's Benevolent Society building, and we'll see you again next week.